So I don't know how to break this, but the AAF has hit a rough patch or three over the past few weeks. Not only dealing with allegations of nearly going broke in their second week of play, league founder Charlie Ebersol is now being sued by a former business associate. He claims that the league was his idea and they had a handshake agreement that Ebersol violated. He wants 50% ownership of the new league for his alleged intellectual property. Even if baseless, it sounds like another messy situation for the league to deal with. Fortunately for the rest of us, SeatGeek is the antonym of distortion and calamity. It's an app that helps to sort all available tickets on the resale market to get you the best value. No alleged handshake deals, no legal squabbles, just tickets. It color codes all of them from red to green on a 1 to 100 scale and gives you a view from where you'll be sitting. As you get scanned into the game on the app itself, it's an easy choice for a pain-free night out on the town. What happens on the field though, SeatGeek can't control that. If it could, it would tell you to use the code word TREE in the link below to save $20 off your first purchase. There are struggles and adversities for every startup to deal with. SeatGeek just helps you out in one convenient motion, no lawsuits needed. I would ask for a moment of silence for Christian Hackenberg, but his meme will forever live in our hearts. Unless the fleet do what many special teams units can't do and not fumble the ball. It was looking like another Memphis massacre. I mean, it's a 14 point lead against a team that can't score for shit. San Diego can't fuck this up, right? But then, something flipped the switch. Maybe it has to do with starting a quarterback who isn't forward pass challenged. The express offense suddenly has traction? Has the Hackenberg curse finally been lifted? The fleet aren't exactly helping with their suddenly slippery turnover happy hands betraying them like Judas. With a competent offense, the Memphis Express win a game. It's like I'm watching a young bird fly for the first time. I feel so proud of them, they've become a real boy. It's the closest thing to a Week 16 showdown in the Ohio Valley. A field blessed as a wonderland of snow. I do have to say, for being a Florida team, the Apollos play pretty well in the cold. Kinda of bucking the trend, aren't we? There isn't much to say besides Orlando convincingly beating their foes in the Stallions. Maybe old Steve Spurrier has some magic left in him after all. It means something when a team is undefeated in this juncture of the season. Are they the class to beat in this league? Or do the Iron have something to say about that? By the way, a quick shout out to the boys over at RAAFB. They're a specialized hub for AAF game threads, reactions, and especially some good old fashioned trash talk. Although certain teams do that to themselves. What do we have here? A 70s throwback defensive battle. Nothing like making that iron defense try to one-up you at their own game. If there's one thing the AAF has plenty of, it's in the defensive sphere of influence. It's possible that many offenses are struggling due to inconsistent QB play, but the defenses have at least had a really nice showcase for NFL scouts. Perhaps a few names being called for looks in the summertime thanks to games like this. This is a game that goes down to the wire, and the result may end up coming down to a new age onside kick. The football, the onside conversion attempt, Perez throws it down there. YouTube didn't teach Perez not to force it into double coverage. Such a shame indeed. Still a good game though. It looks to be more of the same for the Legends, with Matt Sims doing next to nothing with the ball until he suffers an injury in the first quarter. The small constituent of Atlanta fans will get their wish. Entering the Legends fray is local favorite Aaron Murray. I mean, he only went to Georgia. He only has the SEC's passing touchdown record. I don't know why they'd want him in. He wasn't that great. Sure, he led them to victory against one of the stronger teams in the league. Well, when they aren't pulling Travis Benjamins and running into their own end zone for safeties. As a result, the Legends do just enough to get their first victory in this young league's history. Better late than never, I suppose. I wish I could say the same for your search for a stable offensive coordinator. Another one bit the dust. No luck for the haunted. This match was to be the showcase for the AAF. It was expected to be a war of attrition between two of the best teams in the league. Warp out of fantasy land and see the cruel reality of the football gods. An utter rout. You could make the argument that the Apollos had taken the high ground for four quarters. Sterling reputations were destroyed. The likable Luis Perez struggled mightily and was sentenced to a computer to watch more YouTube videos. A supposedly strong defense was shredded like sharp cheddar. Orlando stays perfect for the season and it wasn't even close to being contested. They pulled a Mike Tyson, knocking out their opponent cold in round one. Garrett Gilbert delivered the blow putting them down on the canvas. Someone get a body bag. From what it appears, the showcase matchup that we were expecting from the last game was merely delayed a few hours. The real main event was between the Stallions and the Fleet. Even without the backwards throwing legend Philip Nelson, the Fleet were able to settle for a capable Mike Bercovici. If that name doesn't sound familiar, this hit definitely will. What will also draw our memories is an early lead for the Stallions. Making a statement TD just before halftime should help matters. This is immediately demolished thanks to a job block. 
And then a turnover barrage by the fleet defense. Do you like defensive touchdowns against you? Well, it's score one, get one free day. Three picks for Cameron Kelly, turning him into the equivalent of an All-American. A 13-point lead with four minutes left. This game is over. It's over, isn't it, boys? Why the hell is this suddenly a game again? You know when I say a game is supposed to be over, the game is supposed to be over, not involving you blowing a lead in royal fashion. Typical San Diego, always ruining what should be a good thing. So how are you gonna make it up to these people? Berkovici, going deep up the left side now. I'll wait until they officially drive the dagger. The snap, the hole, the kick is out, and the kick is good! Witness for yourself the rarest of sights. A San Diego player kicking a field goal in the clutch. Nate Keating can learn a thing or two from this. Atlanta should be appeased. Aaron Murray is starting another game for the Legends. Will the Bulldog magic continue? Or more fumble? Memphis is also looking to keep momentum after their own quarterback change. Under the stewardship of Selfie Boy, the Memphis Express keep pace in the heart of Georgia, trading blows for the chance to get themselves out of the basement. With Memphis up six in the third quarter, the Legends choose to respond in kind, with another touchdown. Unfortunately, the two-point conversion fails, resulting in an Express charge down for more. Mettenberger still with it, takes a shot, Tim They proceed to bounce the check. Now the hot potato of pressure is on a meme. Young Wei Koo. Good snap, good hold. Goddamn madman. Don't let your memes be dreams, kids. Okay, boys, the last two games were both entertaining and intense to watch. You've got a lot of pressure on you as the hotshots choose to outright shit the bed. That's... that's lovely. Maybe they realized they were in the same area as the Cardinals and decided to be as terrible as they are. You can start showing up to this game at any time, hotshots. Perhaps they can kidnap the imposters and replace them with their real counterparts at halftime. Or maybe it's mind control that could wear off. Wouldn't that be something, seeing the hotshots come back from this deficit and turning the commanders into a meme? They... they brought it back to respectability? You know I was kidding, right Arizona? It's too bad you didn't play a first half or else I would have thought you could win this game. Maybe if we get NFL backups in this league it might be a reality. Maybe. If you can believe it, we are officially halfway through the inaugural AAF season and certain plot lines and narratives are starting to come into view. There is no contest as to who is the team to beat, and it's from the Sunshine State in the Orlando Apollos. They just seem to be the most complete to me, and an undefeated record proves it. Then there is the second tier, teams that can piece together strong performances, but usually have a flaw or two to keep them from greatness. Groups like the Birmingham Iron, San Antonio Commanders, and possibly the San Diego Fleet can place themselves in this category. After that, there is mediocrity. You can perhaps call the Arizona Hotshots this. Maybe. Then there are the doldrums. Atlanta Legends, Salt Lake Stallions, Memphis Express. Good luck in your relentless tank brigade. At least there's Young Wei Koo. The hell thought we'd be saying that. Leading as he went to the locker room. There's Rashad Ross. Nowhere to go. Okay, Don't do Rashad. that. Okay. Don't do that. Rashad Ross loses the football as Reynolds gets him by the heels. We got a safety there, man. In the end zone, that's got to be a safety. 